Good morning. Welcome back to the Chicago's Morning Answer. I'm Amy Jacobson. In for Dan Proft is the one and only Bruce Wolf. Hi. Thanks, Bruce. Bruce, for coming in. My name is very hard to pronounce. Had I been a girl, my mother was going to name me Beth. Try saying Beth Wolf. <laughs> Beth Wolf. <laughs> Well, Bruce is here, and uh, who is here on American soil is Bo Bergdahl. You know, it was our first real glimpse of him on American soil. He was in a courtroom yesterday, uh, dressed in his army blues, clean shaven. He didn't look gaunt or disorientated like he did after he was exchanged for those five top Taliban leaders. And he entered, uh, he didn't enter a plea. He just decided not to enter a plea. And the only time we've heard from him, is when he opened up on the Serial podcast about how they broke him down while he was in solitary confinement. I couldn't see my hands. I couldn't do anything. The only thing I could do was, like, touch my face. And even that wasn't, like, you know, registering, right? And as he tried to save his life, Bruce, what he told the Taliban about why he had gone AWOL. I told him I basically was fed up with the commanders. So he was fed up with the commanders. That's why he walked Uh, walked out of the platoon, left his fellow soldiers behind, deserted them, and six American soldiers, six, died trying to find him. And with that, we welcome to the program a returning guest, Colonel Lee Ellis, former prisoner of war, author of Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. Good morning, Colonel Ellis. How are you? Good morning, Amy. So were you surprised that Bergdahl deferred entering a plea yesterday? Well, I don't know the legal issues enough to understand completely, uh, but I know he's got a good lawyer, and evidently he thought that was in his best interest to do. So where does it go from here? If you go into the courtroom for your arraignment and don't enter a plea, you must be going back to court soon, right? Yes, he's going to go back to court. I don't know how soon, uh, hopefully fairly soon, but uh, there's a choice there. He could be tried by a judge or by a jury of his peers, which would include one-third enlisted and the others could be officers. or uh, So he could go either way there. He could be uh, tried by the judge only, and then could have uh, the, uh, a jury for the sentencing portion. So he's got a couple of options coming up. Uh, it's interesting how this has played out. You know, originally he was uh, apparently headed toward the summary court martial. Now he's going for the general. So this is more serious, and I, it's what I think most of us had hoped would happen. Colonel Ellis, yeah, you... Uh... You just made the point I was going to bring up, which was it is a general court martial. It looked was like it was going to be a relatively light punishment. Now he's facing possible life in prison, and they've got this podcast going in order to elicit sympathy. And you think of President Obama with his parents in the Rose Garden, and they thought this was going to be some great thing, and now it's really egg on the face of the administration, and they are trying to you know cover themselves uh, right now. But from your experience, I mean, you spent time in the Hanoi Hilton. And you, and I know you can't judge because you want to wait for all the facts to come out. But I mean, the guy left his post, and you know, what kind of, what does this do to the morale of the military if a guy, who, assuming he deserted, gets away with this, which is what the administration wants? Well, the most important thing is accountability, because without accountability, things descend into chaos. Uh, if you can do something that's wrong and get away with it, then it's becomes every man for himself. You can do whatever you want, whatever's right in your own eyes, you can go do it, and law doesn't apply. So I think that's why this has to be pursued vigorously. And, uh, you know, due process will show, I think, uh, as it turns out eventually, that uh, he does have some culpability and he should be held accountable. I don't think he'll ever spend life in prison. I don't think that's going to be an issue. But I think uh, we have to make the point here, and I it maybe has to uh, spend some time in prison, uh, to pay for this uh, violation that he's done. We just have to have uh, good order and discipline in the military. We, we certainly could use some in civilian society, too. We could use a lot more accountability. In fact, that's the subject of my new book I'm working on right now. Hopefully it'll be out before the election. And what's the title of the book? Winning with Honor, Powerful Lessons of Courageous Accountability. Oh, I think Rahm Emanuel should read that. Okay. All right. <laughs> so as somebody who served honorably and, and was a prisoner of war, What was your personal reaction when you heard about Bo Bergdahl and that six Americans died trying to find him? Did you want to bring back the firing squad, which they used to have during World War II? You know, times have changed. I don't think we'll do that anymore. Uh, I think in wartime, uh, if it was, you know, dire conditions right there and he was captured, recaptured back in hands in the heat of the battle, that might be done, but probably not. We're 
we're just a lot more tolerant now than we were back then and maybe to the point of going too far at times. But uh, he's going to get a fair trial, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I'm sure it was hard on his, the men in his organization, and I think we need to take that into consideration as well as uh, Bergdahl's condition, which, you know, he's a little bit questionable as a, as a, uh, as a good soldier and a capable soldier to start with. So those all have to be taken into consideration, but I think the, the unit and the organization there has to be considered, and as part of that, the fact that five or six people died trying to save him or find him, you know, that is an important factor, I think. I, th- I think, you know, a lot of, some people, and maybe it's the bleeding heart in me, <laughs> you know, the other side of me, w- uh, you know, would look at uh, and say, oh, well, how about time served while he was in captivity? Well, that's course, what his lawyer is asking well, for. Uh, which uh, almost sounds, you know, like the kid who kills his parents and then begs for the mercy of the court because he's an orphan. But, I, yeah, what do you think of that? I think that will... I think that will come to play. I actually do. I think that's the times we live in, and I think he will. Uh, he probably did suffer some in that. You know, he did make a mistake in judgment, but he also probably suffered some. So I think that will come into play. So, if, you know, the way I see this playing out, he's probably going to get some time to serve. He's probably going to get a dishonorable discharge, uh, but it won't be anything like life imprisonment. You know, if he stays in jail for two or three years, I'll be surprised if it's much more than that. Colonel Lee Ellis joining us, former prisoner of war, author, I wanted to move on to Afghanistan. I mean, one year after President Obama declared the end of U.S. combat missions there, six Americans are killed. And it's so sad we're not hearing the stories of our brave men and women who died during that attack because we're so focused on the schlong word. Donald Trump used that to describe Hillary Clinton being beaten in the 2008 election. How sad is that when the American people, we, you know, their family members aren't going to have them home for Christmas and are never going to have them home? Yeah, I think this was a real uh, eye-opener for me and I think many others, that that war is still going on and we're, it's kind of off our radar. But the reality is that we have soldiers dying over there in this war, and uh, it's just off our radar. We need to be talking about that, and we need to be making some decisions. Either we need to be able to bring this thing to a conclusion and bring our people home one way or the other, I think. And I think most Americans are starting to feel that way. But President Obama, I mean, he reduced the number of troops in Afghanistan, which I think puts smaller groups at risk. Well, I think that's probably true. Uh, We are at probably more risk than we've been in many years there in Afghanistan. And again, we either need to be in and winning or out and uh, doing something else. It appears to more and more of my friends and me, uh, those of us who've been in combat, we want to go in and win. Or get out. All right. Thank you so much, Colonel Lee Alice, former prisoner of war, author. Again, what's the name of the new book you're working on? Winning Winning, with Honor? Winning with Honor. That's falling, leading with honor. And now it's Winning with Honor, Powerful Lessons of Courageous Accountability. All right. Thank you so much, Colonel Ellis, and thank you so much for your service. Happy holidays. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Bruce. Good seeing you today. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line.